Who's this big orc person I keep hearing about? I'll bet he sucks. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about uh, the new album from Bibio, uh, Phantom Brickworks. Bibio is the alias for Stephen James Wilkinson, an English producer from the UK, currently signed to Warp Records. Never covered an artist like that before. Now, I'll be real, I was really racking my brain on whether or not I wanted to cover this one at all, as this guy is like barely on the fringe of electronic music. I don't even know if I'd consider him electronic in general. I mean, I decided to cover him anyway. Figured there wasn't going to be anyone else doing him. But it kind of bothered me since what I could hear of the guy through iTunes previews did not sound remotely electronic for the most part. Maybe some albums had more overtly electronic tinges, but when I f heard his first album, it was just mostly instrumental guitar pieces. Is that really electronic? I don't know. I mean, to be fair, it did make me think on how I have no qualms covering Brian Eno on this channel, despite him typically not us utilizing electronic tones in his music. But I think Eno's kind of different since he was also a big pioneer in the genre and defined a whole new way of looking at music, and his influence is so strongly felt throughout the genre to the point of ambient just falling under electronic in general, even if it might not originally have any electronic textures in it at all. Thing about Bibio is that he obviously isn't Eno. He's, he's only been around since 2005. I mean, I guess that is enough time to become influential, especially if you're signed to Warp Records like he is, but maybe a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the influence he knows made. But like I said, I decided I'd need to evaluate for myself and listen to all his albums to really make the judgment on whether or not he was electronic at all, and if he wasn't, well, so be it. At least I'd have a clear answer and have a video on it. So yeah, I guess now I'll just go down his discography so far. This album is like if Eno and Oval wrote Boards of Canada's Campfire Head Phase. That being said, even though I consider all of those names to fall under the electronic umbrella, I don't know if I can honestly call this electronic music since it's just all acoustic guitar pieces for the most part. And it's also definitely mood music that needs a certain environment to fully enjoy. Specifically, don't listen to it when you're walking around downtown in the city. I, I've tried that, it doesn't work. I guess the album's fine, but probably not going to ever listen to this one again. This is basically the same album again with a little bit more energy. And this is basically the same album again. I mean, these have gotten infinitesimally better, but... Please tell me the next one sounds different. It does, thank God. There's actual, real, obvious electronic elements this time around, too. I mean, it's still kind of primarily indie rock, folk, got some hip-hop in there. Only a little more electronic than, say, Gorilla's Demon Days or something. By the way, please do not fill the comments with requests to cover that. I... I'm not going to. But yeah, this, this is a pretty good album. Okay, I think... This is probably the closest we're gonna get to a straight electronic album from this guy. I mean, he still has those heavy folk and rock influences, but yeah. I, I would say this is good stuff here. I, I think I can hold on to this one. More of an ambient-focused version of the last album. Still has electronic elements in there, but again, pretty solid. I think this one is probably my favorite of his albums as well. Getting some bent vibes from this one, I think. This one interestingly brings in some elements of like 70s, 80s funk, and it ends up with a weirdly vaporwave y vibe crossed with STS9, which sounds really weird, but yeah, it's, it's cool stuff. Which brings us to here. I'll admit that even after going through the whole back catalog, I'm still kinda on the fence on whether I consider them electronic. I think just barely. I mean, a lot of these just feel like they're more rock and folk at their core, but he does certainly have electronic elements and ideals through a lot of his stuff. Did definitely provide me with some good thinking exercises on where precisely I hold my boundaries on what I do or don't consider electronic music, but yeah. I mean, if I can make an exception for LCD Sound System or STS-9, I can make an exception for Bibio. I mean, I'd have no qualms covering, say, Clark's Iridelphic, despite that basically just being a Bibio album. I, I mean, granted, that sound was a complete anomaly for Clark, and it's totally the norm for Bibio, but whatever. Possibly a bigger trouble, though, is that as much as I was thinking about what the boundaries this guy crossed, as much as I hate to say it, 
none of these albums left a super strong impression on me. I mean, I'm probably gonna be taking his first three, four albums off my iPod at my earliest convenience. They were fine, but not the kind of thing I see myself listening to on a regular basis. And his other stuff, I mean, I remember enjoying his stuff, I just didn't, wouldn't say I love any of these or remember any melodies or big standout tracks or anything. Granted, I'm not sure if that's my own fault or Bibio's, but I'll probably be hanging on to those last three albums if nothing else, so... Yeah, that basically leaves the album which this video is actually supposed to be about, Phantom Brickworks. Yeah, I'm sorry, this is another one of those videos where the background on the album and the artist is a lot more extensive than my comments on the album itself, but oh well. Especially because after hearing this album, I'm definitely a little frustrated as all this prelude feels almost kind of pointless since Phantom Brickworks is just basically purely in Brian Eno homage. There's no guitars or folk elements or even really any electronic sounds. I mean, the entire album is stripped back to mostly just piano, playing repetitive riffs for long stretches of time, with some occasional very soft synth textures. Basically, if you've heard Eno's Music for Airports, or his collaboration with Harold Budd like Plateau of Mirror or The Pearl, you've basically heard Phantom Break Works. That's kind of a problem with this album. This is, it does not sound like Bibio. I may, I may not have liked his first album, Five, very much, but it was definitely its own thing that I can attribute to him. It's his own style. If it came out of Eno, I mean, I might have believed it, but I would have done a double take, too. You know, it doesn't have anything that sounds like that. But if I listened to Phantom Brickworks and not known who it was, and was also familiar with Bibio's style as well, I wouldn't have been able to figure it out myself. I'd just immediately assume it was Eno. I would probably be a little disappointed if it were an Eno album, since he's obviously done this before, and uh, he's typically not the kind of artist to repeat himself. Well, maybe Lux or Reflection. But I probably would also give it, still give it my recommendation if it were an Eno album, because to be real, I think I got more enjoyment out of this Eno read, retread from someone else than I did out of either of those retreads I mentioned from Eno himself. Cause as derivative and nondescript as Phantom Brickworks is, I will have to give it to Bibio for nailing the appeal of Eno. It does all come across very emotional and beautiful, as this kind of music is supposed to. It's effective in its minimalism, to the point of me just barely being able to give its derivativeness a pass. Also, weirdly enough, I think it does has some good replay value, too. I mean, Eno's stuff is usually trying to sound all peaceful and angelic and trying to calm people, lift their spirits and stuff. The Harold Bud collabs have a little more to them than that, but music for airports is especially. I mean, that's all well and good, but Phantom Breakworks does definitely have a more melancholy bend to it on average, making it feel a little more grounded in reality than Eno's stuff. There are some exceptions, of course. The second part of the title track, uh, Phantom Brickworks 2, and the last track, Capel Bethania, are of the typical Eno variety and do have that typically heavenly vibe. And as a result, I don't really enjoy them as much. Most of this feels more nuanced and cinematic than that, so even though I do in fact already have plenty of music kind of like this in my life, I feel like I can still find room on my iPod for this. And to be perfectly honest, I think that's all I can say on the topic of this album. As far as individual tracks go, they're distinctive enough on an emotional level. Some tracks are happier and more nostalgic, some are spookier and more disquieting. Some end in really long silences that I just wish weren't there. I really don't have much to say. It is kind of a problem with albums like these that just don't have much of anything to talk about. But there are good ambient piano pieces here. If you like Eno, they're worth checking out. I mean, this album's not very creative, but yeah, I think I can have space in my life for this, so I'll just leave it at that. I'm overall feeling a solid 7 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.